Okay, hello. Today we're going to be looking at how to get into medical school. But for those of you who have recently just gotten your ATAR or got it towards the end of last year and didn't get in, you know, and just thinking about it, just making this video and writing the script for it, I was like, didn't realize how long it feels since I was in that position, like I was so dumb. And the fact that you've even clicked on this video and looked at this means you're in a much better position than me. And this video is kind of aimed at those of you who just don't know what to do now after you finish year 12 and you still got that fire burning, you know, and you still want to get into meds. So I'm going to talk about what the options are and what the path looks like laid out ahead of you. Now I've broken this video into a few different parts, so I'm going to start off with talking about how this is actually a little bit of a blessing in disguise, and I'll get into that in a minute. And then I'll talk about some of the degrees um, that you might want to consider doing um, to prepare you for medicine, extracurricular stuff, honours, if you've never heard of that, I'll talk about that as well. A little bit about the GAMSAT, because I have some other videos on the GAMSAT, and then I'm going to talk about how you don't even have to do the GAMSAT in some situations. So let's get to it. Alright, the first thing I want to talk about is that you shouldn't be overly concerned that you didn't get in. And I know a common complaint people say is, oh, I'll be too old when I get in. Even if it takes you like five, six, seven years to get in, you'll still only be 24, 25, like if, when you do actually get in. you only be one or two or three years older than the people that got straight in out of high school and you have a broader experience of life if you choose to take some time away from the education system and actually experience life and believe it or not I actually think it's a pretty good thing because medicine just is not cut out for everyone and if you're going to make a decision on what you're going to do for the rest of your life off a career choice you made when you were 16 or 17, you were potentially like robbing yourself of so many great career opportunities and other things out in the world if you choose to go down this one path of medicine at such a young age. But if you clicked on this video, you probably already made that decision to continue to pursue medicine. So the rest of the video, I'm just going to talk about what other opportunities and things you should do to prepare yourself to get into medicine both the application side and things that will help you once you actually get in so i'm just going to quickly mention what the gamsat is it is a graduate exam um, to get into medicine so graduate meaning you have to have a degree already and it's like six hours but now it's like shorter because it's online but um it's just something you need to do in most cases, I'll talk about at the end a little bit about pathways that you can do without doing the GAMSAT. But for most people that get in after they have a degree, they do the GAMSAT. And um, it's divided in three sections, but I have a lot more info in other videos if you want to look at those. Now, I'm going to move on to some of the degrees um, that can prepare you for medicine and um, can give you a good experience. And things that you are health related that you might actually enjoy just as much as medicine. So technically, like the prerequisite to do the GAMSAT is you can have any degree, but the main ones that people kind of fall into that are health related tend to be medical science, biomedicine, other sciencey degrees, uh, paramedics and nursing. And I'm going to talk through some of the pros and cons of each of those. But I'll, it's also important to note that each university kind of has spots allocated to people that do those degrees. So for example, with Flinders, um, if you did medical science, paramedics or health science, there were about, I think 30 to 40 positions 
in the cohort, in each year cohort, they were dedicated just to students from that degree. And then the rest they got from other unis, um, other degrees at Flinders, uh, interstate, stuff like that. So biomedicine, medical science and health science, they have the benefit of being quite flexible as in terms of the topics you can choose. So this means you can kind of tweak it to do some of the easier topics to boost your GPA or do the harder topics that are medically related to actually prepare yourself and make it easier when you get into medicine. And from my experience, it helps with a lot of the background, theoretical, scientific knowledge, seeing as I did medical science, but it doesn't really prepare you for any of the clinical experience, the thing you actually see when you work on the wards. And also a lot of the lectures and topics that are compulsory or they kind of skew you towards are research based. And there's nothing really inherently wrong with that. A lot of doctors do do research part time and it's an incredibly useful skill to be able to interpret research. But um, again, it just doesn't give you that clinical side um, compared to some of the other degrees that I'm going to mention. Now onto nursing and paramedics. So. Um, I had a little chat with one of my friends who's a registered nurse um, that's in my cohort and from my experiences like being in class with her she's very on the ball she's very smart um, it may just be her but I think her experience working in a hospital as a nurse really prepared her a lot for what to expect during your life as a doctor although kind of different but still Similar, same, same, but different, you know? Um, I forgot what I was gonna talk about. Oh yeah, nursing. It gives you time to actually make up your mind as to whether this is actually a good career choice for you. And the same goes with paramedics. So I actually told my younger brother, do paramedics because I see a lot of people at Flinders um, that get in after doing paramedics. So they tend to prefer paramedics and that's because you have an incredible amount of personal growth because you do so much placement and so many rotations um, in an ambulance and you meet all sorts of patients, patients with you know, heart attacks, seizures, strokes, all that stuff, you know, suicidal patients, kids, and you actually get that experience to know like, whoa, this is medicine, this is full on. And although it's only in the acute scenario, Again, it gives you an opportunity to reevaluate if this is really for you. you. If you really enjoy it, then you can use it as a stepping stone to, to get more. And also it helps you a lot with the interview side because you have so many examples and anecdotes to draw on when you're answering questions because you've had time to think about your convictions. Now, in terms of honors and extracurricular stuff, so if, for most of you that want to get into medicine, Sometimes GPA and GAMSAT just isn't quite enough and sometimes honours can help boost your GPA and um, help get you a bit more experience that can help you get into medicine. And it is a year, it's quite gruelling, but a lot of people I've met have said it was quite a good experience and I haven't done it myself personally. Um, I got straight in after I graduated, but it's by no means a wasted year. Like a lot of people really enjoyed that year. If you work really hard and do well, you can even get your name on a publication, which can build your CV up later down the track in medicine and, and get your foot in the door with that research side of medicine. Now that's something you should really start thinking about towards the end of the, your degree. Not really so much now, but what you can start doing now is smaller extracurricular volunteering so look around in your local area think about things that you actually care about don't just do it for the sake of volunteering like do it because you actually believe in what that organization is trying to do um, an example for me is I worked in the Royal Adelaide Hospital as a volunteer and I got to meet such a nice variety of patients and a lot of them you know, the Royal Adelaide Hospital is quite a complex place. And I really liked, like, helping them around, navigate, getting them to where they need to be, and um, just meeting them and, and having a 
casual conversation with them about how they're doing it. They were very open to sharing their experiences with me and it was really nice. Like I felt like I was actually doing something, um, you know, valuable to them. And that was something that, you know, I, I drew on when I was going into medicine. So don't just do it to get a gold star on your name. Think of three good reasons and, you know, use that. So the last thing I want to mention was there is actually a way to circumvent the whole GAMSAT process, uh, which I thought was quite funny. And like when I started last year, I didn't even know that was possible to do. So I'm giving you the, the hot tip, the inside tip. So use it well, um, but no, they just, um, one of my friends, he never intended on pursuing medicine. He was, uh, he was kind of pushed in uh, to research by his family and um, he decided to go uh, to ANU in Canberra and realized they also offered a, um, a pathway that gets you into medicine. Um, without actually doing the games and he was quite passionate about getting into medicine so he switched his career path and decided to continue on with medicine and it was he described the experience as still quite difficult like he had to do honors he had to get a really good score in his um you know his coursework and there are only a few selected positions but um he did manage to get in and um and a few other people in that cohort did get in with uh, my cohort. So um, I think, I don't know if ANU is the only uh, uni that offers that, but there are other places, no doubt, that have special pathways that if you ask around or if you send emails um, to the faculty, the staff, they may be able to um, give you a bit of direction and give you a bit of understanding about if there are any pathways for undergraduates to get straight into their postgrad medical degree. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you need any more advice on GAMSAT, study hacks, all that stuff, feel free to check out my playlist, um, other videos floating around. Leave a like and a sub, really helps the channel and I would appreciate it a lot if you found this useful. And that's it. Go get that bread. This is Cher.